Hi guys, Ashantin here. How are you? I have been building, not in this spawn village that David and Bella have so very kindly built, and there are some fantastic builds going up here. I am particularly enamoured of this brick and marble building. I'm on with Ben I. Hi. Um, I'm not sure what's coming behind here. So if we go through and everything is just looking that little bit better all the time. I mean, look at that. Just a nice little bit there, you know. Sorry, there's a very, very noisy motorbike going past outside. I hope you haven't picked that one up. And coming around here, we go through the square with Winnie's fish and chip shop there. And the beautiful lamp. And this is where I've been building a caravanserai. These are people who travel, and they travel with tents, they have a tented encampment, and they travel with llamas. Llamas are proving to be a lot more difficult than I thought. I'm in the process of building this, all the detail isn't finalised yet. Now this big tent, the major tent here, I have taken inspiration from Scar. On this one. He is a fantastic builder and I would not have thought of building a tent in this way with this sort of ridge at either end. Now the tent down here is all my own design and this one as you can see if I come up to the top here is far more of a flat circular type of tent and this is based on a yurt. So that's based on a yurt and people who had yurts would indeed have had llamas. We have a second enclosure here, so I think I'm going to bring ponies and mules across for people. Um, this looked actually wonderful until I had to double fence this. When I found a llama casually strolling over the fence and away, they are almost impossible beasts to manage. I will come back to that later. And this tent over here uh, originally was based on a, a wonderful, a combination between a wigwam and one of the old um, chivalrous knights tents. Um, I feel it ought to be billowing silk in these glorious colours. But I do think it's very very nice inside there will be a glowstone lamp there. so all around here I've made little paths with some coarse dirt and ordinary dirt but these llamas are proving to be exceptionally difficult to manage I have only managed to get two of them across even though we had five and they have certain, I mean, it was horrendous when I discovered them climbing out of a fenced enclosure. And they're tall enough to look over the top, too. They're quite fun, actually, in terms of colour. I mean, if you look at the two I've got, I've put a red blanket on one, because I think it goes well with the sort of wonderful eastern colours I've got here. This is not a European caravan, guys. This one travels the Silk Road. This is a sort of Eastern caravan. And the other one is blue that I think looks quite good. They both look fairly Arabic to me. Um, I think these guys may turn out to be carpet salesmen. I'm trying out different colour carpets here to see what fits with the walls. But I think it's rather a nice little sort of addition at the back. The encampment of the the travelling herdsmen who park outside the village to sell their wares. But the problems I've been having with these llamas, um, you see all these videos of llamas where they lasso one and the entire herd forms up behind it. It's all wonderful, except that when you have them in an enclosed space, they don't form up as a caravan. So guys, if you have llamas, my advice to you is put them in an open enclosure, but whatever you do, do not put them into stables, because getting them out of here 
has been a major problem. Now, one of them, the one I've nicknamed Mexican Pete at the back, belongs to Dorf, and I have tried to access him, and I know I can. But this lot, they look as if they would follow each other, they look innocent little things. They will come out of gates if you open them, but this isn't wide enough to tow them out of here. I've been towing them into this corner and just about got them out, but I can only get one out at a time. The others will not leave each other, they will not leave shelter, and they will not form up as a caravan. I can get sometimes to here, and sometimes to here, and then they start breaking the leads on the walls, on anything they can rub it against. Once the lead is broken, all you see, if you see it, because they're so fast, is a backside of a llama bobbing into the distance to go and join the herd. So they are not without problems. But nonetheless, I'm having an incredibly... I've had a wonderful time wanting to have a place that llamas would look at home in, led me to build my wonderful caravanserai over there. And I have thoroughly enjoyed it. It's been a... I don't normally build tents. I think I once built a, a first aid tent for MJ in Tree 2, which actually came out very well. But it was more of a Boy Scouts tent. But these sort of uh, wonderful Eastern-looking striped tents of glorious colours are something else again. And by the way, someone on this server is in big trouble because I came out the back here to try to get some nice different colours for the carpets in my caravanserai and my tents. And I found that all my sheep had been dyed white and I've had to come back in and dye them all back to different colours so that I have a range of colours available to me. So to whoever dyed my sheep white, I'm not a happy bunny over that one. Mind you, Dog wasn't happy with me over taming llamas. I actually don't know whether the babies will belong to the person that tamed them or whether they will just be free for all. I watched a video... Now, who was it by? I can't remember, but it was on the Minecraft video. And in that video, Aurelian was breeding llamas. And she... Ooh, she was saying she was going to give away the babies. So it didn't sound as if the babies would only belong to the parents. I... Oh! What a place for a skeleton! For goodness sake! Well, thank you for the boots. What did I get there? Power one. A set of golden boots. Very nice. Thank you. Huh. I didn't know skeletons like windsurfing. <laughs> Even the skeletons windsurf. <laughs> oh dear. Dear, oh dear. So, let's go and have another look with Dawn coming up. Yeah, I do like this build. It's far more exotic than I normally build. I don't normally use wild colours and mixed colours and colours that clash with each other. But I have put the colours together on purpose here. Um, as I said, this is meant to be a Middle Eastern caravan. I just wish I had sort of gold tassels and stuff like that, you know? It'd be great. This is meant to represent a bright red tent that has faded and the parts with the biggest fade, of course, are the ones that are highest towards the sun. The same on this tent, where the top has faded in the sunlight. Now you're all right, are you? I'm still getting used to these guys. Hmm. And this one, of course, is a new tent, so it doesn't have any fading yet. They're really great, these tents. I love them. I really do. And I think they add a, a different spot of colour to the back of this build. There's a lot of this pale yellow and sort of dark wood and grey. And then suddenly you come onto this wild eastern gypsy encampment or Arabic. 
I think it's not really gypsy, that would be wooden caravans, but I think this is more Arabic. Think Bedouin. Think Bedouin. And llamas aren't camels, but I suppose they're close. They do like climbing though, and they will climb over fences, which means that what was a very nice enclosure now looks almost too high. Tricky beasts, these llamas. And there is a lot to learn about them. The cow, of course, wandered in by itself. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh dear. On that note, guys, I think we are going to say bye-bye.